Hello, Bobby Torres of Fright Box, recording here to show you how I dial in reverb on my snare drum within a metal mix. So I've had more than a few people ask me exactly how I deal with reverb on my snare drum, so I figured I would do a video on it and show you exactly how I have my routing set up and just how I approach reverb on my snare drums in general. So I'm gonna play a sample back and then I'm gonna dive deep and show you exactly how I achieve the snare drum sound and reverb within this sample. Let's check it out. Okay, so that sample was by my good friends in a band called Toy Machine. I will leave a link to their music right below within this video's description. So now I'm a fan of simplicity and I don't believe in making my reverbs and just send effects in general rocket science. So I treat my send effects almost like an analog console and I try to keep them to a minimum. So for the most part, I'm only using one reverb for my main drum sound and that's the case in this situation. It's the same reverb that I'm using my toms and snare drum. So let's take a look at my routing in this mix. So if you look here, I have three components that make up my general snare drum sound. I have my snare track, which is my live snare. I have a snare sample, which is a sample of the actual snare drum, a raw sample of the snare drum from the day we recorded. It's a sample that I made myself of the original snare. And my snare bottom track, that's it. And they're all being bussed through Ascend to my reverb auxiliary track. And the reverb that I'm using within this mix is just the stock reverb that comes with Pro Tools. Now, I just want to mention, people obsess over using fancy plugins, but for me, I can pretty much use any reverb plugin and I'll get the job done just fine. Again, focus on how you use your plugins, not the plugins themselves. So if we look at the settings on my reverb, I'm just using a room setting with a pre-delay of about 25 milliseconds and a decay of about 588 milliseconds. And my reverb send is set to 100% wet, so none of the dry signal is duplicated through my reverb auxiliary track. So nothing earth shattering, just really basic stuff. And after my reverb plugin, I just have a basic EQ that's rolling off everything above 10K just to get rid of the super duper top end on my reverb that I'll end up clashing with my cymbals or the top end of my vocals. Okay, so let's backtrack and take a look at my actual snare tracks themselves. So I'm gonna play my live snare in solo so you can hear the exact amount of reverb that's being applied to my live snare. Let's check it out. So as you can hear, not a ton of reverb, just a touch. For me on my snare top and snare sample, I'm using the reverb just to kind of help blend the sound of my kit together. The reverb for me really comes into play on my snare bottom, which we're gonna get to in a second. So now let's take a listen to my snare drum sample and the amount of reverb that's applied to my snare sample. So as you can tell, it's very similar to my live snare, just a touch of reverb. Now, I just want to quickly mention why I'm using a snare sample of the original snare in the first place. And for me, it's just extra reinforcement. It almost acts kind of like parallel compression because remember the snare sample is gonna be super consistent because it's a sample. Now I do take multi samples. There's about 12 different hits combined that's blended in with the original snare track, but nonetheless, it's gonna be more consistent than a human being will ever be. And I just have it blended in ever so slightly just to reinforce my snare sound in a very natural way. Now I have nothing against using pre-made samples. I just don't like doing it myself. I like my mixes to sound like my mixes. And also I like the idea of using samples from the actual kit that I'm using in my session. I just find that things blend in a much more natural way when I take that approach. Okay, so here's the big tamale here. Let's take a listen to my snare bottom track. Now, if you take a look at my snare bottom EQ, I am not being shy with my high pass filtering at all. I'm rolling off everything below 1K. Now for me, I get all of my punch and low end out of my snare top track. 
For me, I just like using my snare bottom track for extra sizzle and just for some extra three-dimensional vibe for my snare sound. So because of this, in my mix, I want to hear more of the reverb of my snare bottom than the actual direct sound of my snare bottom. Now, if we look at my sends on my snare bottom track, I have five sends going to my reverb. Now, just recently I did a video on drum routing and someone commented on how many sends I had within my Reaper template for my snare bottom track. And for me, it's just an easy way to send a boatload of signal to my reverb send. So this way there's more reverb of my snare bottom track than the actual dry sound of my snare bottom track. I've been doing it like this for years. For me, it's a nice straightforward way to get a boatload of signal to my reverb and um, it works. And also all I have to do is just take my send and duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it. I do it like this within Pro Tools, Logic, and Reaper. Now for me, I use reverb just for glue and vibe, and a lot of my drum size comes from my room tracks. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play all three of my snare tracks along with my drum room tracks, just so you can hear how much my drum room tracks are adding to my snare sound. Let's check it out. So as you could tell when I muted my room tracks, it really did take a lot away from my snare drum sound. I'm gonna be honest with you, my drum room is nothing amazing. It's actually a pretty small room and it's relatively dead sounding. The way that I make my drum room sound bigger than it actually is, is by taking my room mics and pointing them away from my drum kit so I pick up more of the reflections of my room than the drum kit itself. So that's a pro hack for you. If you ever wanna make your drum room sound bigger, take your drum mics, Keep them close to the ground to help avoid excess cymbal sound and point them away from the kit. And I like to use one to three room mics. Usually one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. Okay, so with all that being said, I'm gonna play the sample back once more. And let's take a listen. And this is how I approach snare drum reverb within my heavy mixes. If you have found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And be sure to download my five-step guide for better heavy mixes so you can achieve better mixes with the gear you have right now. I have a link to the free guide right below within the description. Till next time, happy mixing.